let's talk about um, pregnancy okay. and the changes that occur in pregnancy. Um, can you tell me about the cardiovascular and respiratory changes in pregnancy? Yeah, so the, um, there are many changes that happen throughout pregnancy, pretty much from uh, conception or early pregnancy up until um, the postpartum period. Um, so to start with the cardiovascular system, um, there is a increase in the cardiac output, um, both by a small increase in the stroke volume, but largely by an increase in the heart rate. There is a reduction in the systemic vascular resi resistance because of the actions of progesterone. Um, so often there is a overall reduction in blood pressure, um, particularly the diastolic blood pressure. Um, from about 20 weeks of um, pregnancy, you can also get reduced uh, venous return to the heart due to um, aortocaval compression. So uh, pregnant ladies in the supine position can get complete uh, occlusion of the inferior vena cava, so should be um, nursed in a left lateral position if possible. Um, the um, sort of hematological, which sort of ties into this, there's a general increase in circulating volume. Um, there's an increase in the concentration of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. However, this is proportionally less than the increase in volume. So you get a dilutional um, anemia, you can get a dilutional thrombocytopenia. Um, moving on to the respiratory system, um, there is an increase in alveolar minute ventilation. Um, this is largely due to an increase in respiratory rate. Um, this can cause a respiratory alkalosis at term um, and hypocapnia. Um, as the uterus and the fetus enlarge, you can get um, splinting of the diaphragm, so you can get uh, reduced extrathoracic uh, compliance. Um, pregnant women also have a higher basal metabolic rate, their oxygen consumption is higher, um, their FRC is lower because of the, so functional residual capacity is lower um, because of the, the effects of the pregnant uterus. And so all of this can mean that pregnant women are prone to uh, quick desaturations um, if there's any compromise. Okay. Um, what about, uh, what factors um, predispose pregnant women to um, uh, aspiration? Um, so the predisposition, pre uh, pregnant women are predisposed to aspiration for a variety of reasons. Um, so one is um, that there is a physical um, enlargement of the abdomen causing upwards movement of the stomach and the esophagus. Um, progesterone causes relaxation of the lower esophageal um, sphincter, which can predispose to um, aspiration. Um, and there is a slight reduction in uh, gut motility in pregnancy as well, which again adds to the risk of aspiration. Uh, the, in labor, um, there's, there's a phenomenon that's seen where women with cardiac heart problems are at the risk of um, heart failure. What's the reason for that? Um, so people with, uh, women with known cardiac problems are predisposed to heart failure uh, for a variety of reasons. So because of the increased heart rate, cardiac output, there is increased myocardial oxygen demand, um, which can cause strain on a heart if there's already underlying problems. And um, there's an increased circulating volume. So this can lead to things like fluid shifts um, and fluid overload. Um, if there are cardiac problems. Um, what else? That's it. All right. Um, can you tell me how substances pass from the maternal circulation and cross the placenta, the various mechanisms? Um, so they can pass uh, in many different mechanisms. This can be simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, um, penocytosis, um, that's it. So depending on a variety of things such as polarity, um, molecular weight, um, protein binding, uh, different drugs will 
across the placenta to a varying amount. In terms of molecular size, what's, is there any particular value you can think of? We're almost um, done. So uh, drugs under 4,000 Daltons will pass easily. Drugs under 8,000 Daltons may pass easily and above 8,000, it's unlikely they'll pass by simple diffusion. All right, I'll stop you there.